Hello, Michael Bettine here once again, and today we're going to talk about a very popular question I get asked. What gong should I buy? So join me right now on It's Cup of Time. I've got these questions. I said, you, you, you see this on the internet a lot, and people write to me about gongs and buying gongs. And these two questions have come up on Facebook in the past five days or so. One I saw today, and I've seen the same question so many times, and people have asked me the same question so many times, little variations, but the same thing. I have a 32-inch symphonic gong and would like to pair it with another gong. Any suggestions? Well, the fun of Facebook and being on a gong forum, and somebody has a question like that, and this is what I always tell people, a hundred people will give you a hundred different answers to that because people will ask a question like this and everybody has a favorite gong and they'll say well you should buy a peisty mercury planet gong because i love mine and it's great you should buy a 34 inch chow gong because i have one and it's super you know and on and on and on so people always tend to first speak up with their favorite gong or gongs and say, you should buy one because I have one and I like it. You should get one of these. That's really horrible advice. <laughs> uh, and again, ask that question of 100 people, you're likely to get 100 different answers. So then where are you? You're not any better off than before you asked the question because you might have 100 choices now. What do I buy? This guy said get a planet gong. This guy said get a, a wind gong. This guy said get, you know, somebody else's gong, this gong, that gong, big one, small one, whatever. That's a hard question, you know. Uh, there is no answer to that other than what do you like? My answer to something like this would be, okay, a 32-inch symphonic gong. Doesn't say what type, but I would suspect it's a peisty gong. If I were to buy a second gong, there's a couple different directions I could go. One, I could go with, I would want to go with a different size and quite a size difference too. I wouldn't want to buy like a 30-inch or a 34-inch gong because that's not a big size. I would go, if I had a 32, I would probably go to at least a 28 if I was going smaller. A 28 inch gong or maybe a 36 or 38 if I was going larger. Then I'm going to get some pitch difference in there. Especially if, if I was buying another Peisty gong. Because a 32 and a 30 inch, there's not much difference there. A 28 and a 32 inch, there's quite a difference in the, in the actual pitch. So I might do that. Or, you know, go with a planet gong, smaller or larger, because you're going to get a little different tonality. The planet gongs play differently. They have a more focused sound, a little more mid-range, where symphonic has more highs. Do that. Or another way to go would be to move into a bronze gong. Peisty gongs, Meinl gongs, uh, Otkin gongs, most of the European gongs are made of nickel silver, sheet nickel silver, so they're fairly thin, fairly responsive. They tend to have a lot of mids and highs. I would go to something in a bronze Chinese gong, like a chow, if you want a really deep, powerful sound. Get a 28-inch chow to go with your 32-inch Peisty Symphonic. That's going to give you very different character, probably a very different pitch, and it, it, it's going to have a lot of low end to it. Where the Peisty will have high end, the chow will have low end. Or go with a wind gong, the same thing. The wind gong will have, it might be crashier than a chow, but it's still going to have a lot of low end compared to the Peisty. 
or go with a sun gong. That's a nice kind of in between a wind gong and a chow gong. You know, do something like that. Or go to some completely different kind of gong, like a hang gong or maybe some sort of a, a bossed gong, like a bow gong or something. There's a lot of different choices out there. But I would really, if I only had two gongs, I would want them to be fairly different, probably at least a fourth apart in pitch, so that you could, you know, bing, bong. So there's a difference. It's not like you're bing, bing. Yeah, they're almost the same. You'd want a difference. So people could go, oh yeah, he's hitting the high gong. He's hitting the low gong. Yeah, I would want to do something like that. So look for, you know, contrasting sounds. Contrasting in pitch, either higher and lower. Contrasting in sound, like a bronze gong would be a more solid sound, probably a deeper, darker pitch than a peisty gong. Or go with something in a, in a nipple gong, any bow gong or some sort of a gamelan gong or something. That will have a very solid, focused sound, some harmonics in there. So that's what I would do if I just had two. I would want to have two that are very different. To me, it's, it's no use having two that are really you know, close in sound and character, because why? Now, if I had a whole bunch of gongs, and then I had two that were real close, so maybe I can get some beat patterns going, that's one thing. But I wouldn't want to have just my only two gongs to be very close in pitch. So do that. Uh, you know, look for contrast. I think that's really important. And again, for buying gongs, uh, it's a hard thing to do. Um, if you're lucky enough to be near one of the major gong dealers, like the Memphis Gong Chamber or Andy's Music in Chicago or the Gong Shop in San Francisco or some other places around, you can go there and test a lot of stuff. They have a wide selection of instruments to play. Most of us aren't that lucky. Fortunately, I'm close to Chicago, so I, I can go down to Andy's and play stuff in person. But, you know, listen to a lot of gongs. Listen to a lot of other people. Listen to YouTube videos. Listen to them. And kind of zero in on the sounds you like. You might go, oh, I really like that wind gong sound. Wind dogs, yeah, I kind of like that shimmery shh sort of thing. Maybe I should get a wind gong. Or you might go, wow, that chow sound. I really like that big, heavy, powerful chow sound. I might, you know, be really interested in adding one of those. Or a different Peisty gong. Or like Peisty has the new bronze gongs, the B8 bronze gongs. You might hear one of those specialty types and go, wow, that's really an interesting character. So different than what I already have. Maybe I'll go for something like that. But YouTube is a good place to start. Listen to a lot of videos. I have a lot of videos up with gongs. A lot of other people do. You know, do your homework. Kind of zero in on the sounds that you like. And then if possible, if you can play some in person, that can help you zero in things even more. From there, you can go on to uh, websites like Gongs Unlimited, Memphis Gong Shop, The Gong Shop, all these places do have videos of their gongs, either an example of the type of gong or as Memphis Gong Chamber says, uh, the, they have the video of the exact gong that you can buy. So go to those places, listen to the things. Don't listen on little tiny earbuds or on your computer speakers. Listen on quality headphones or large speakers so you can really get the effect of what it sounds like. Listen to a bunch of gongs on those sites. You can probably zero in on what sort of sounds you like. You know, listen to them, get an idea, and then you can always talk to these people. Call them up. Tell them I sent you, though. Tell them I sent you. But call them up and say, hey, I'm interested in this kind of gong. I'm thinking of like, I'm thinking of getting like a 26, 28 inch chow gong or wind gong. What can you tell me? What, you know, what do you have in stock? You know, I'd like like a low pitched one or a high pitched one or something. So you can look at 
things like that. You can also tell them, I have a 32-inch Bicey Symphonic Gong. I'm looking for something a little different. I'm thinking of like a 28-inch Wind Gong. What do you have that's, you know, that might work with that? That's, you know, not the one up on your website because a lot of times they just put an example. But do that. Call these places. That's what they're there for. So again, the four main places I would call would be Gongs Unlimited in Nebraska, Memphis Gong Chamber in Memphis, a gong shop in San Francisco, Steve Weiss Music in Philadelphia, and if you can get a hold of them, the fifth one would be Andy's Music in Chicago. But Andy's kind of hard to get a hold of sometimes. But talk to these people. And that's what they're there for. And they can often help you find something. Even if you just have a sound idea. Say, I want something that's kind of high-pitched and crashy. Or even if you have a note in mind. Something around an A that's crashy. An A3 that's crashy or whatever. And I have this other gong. You know, I'm looking for something to go with it. Talk to them. They might be able to send you some more sound files to listen to. Maybe send you three different 28-inch wind gong files. And you can go, ah, I like the second one. I like that. Let's get the second one. Because they want to help, you know, and they want to make sure you have something that's right. But that's a good way to do it if you can't do it in person. Talk to these people. Okay, the second question was that... About small gongs, what would you recommend for 18 inch or less to have a richest sound for handheld gong? Again, what does richest mean in your ear? Richest as far as focused sound or crashy sound or whatever. There's a lot of great gongs you could get for a small gong. For handheld, yeah, I wouldn't like 16 or 18 inches great. But for handheld, I would might go with something a little bigger, like 20 or 22 inch. Depending on what you get, a 22 inch chow gong is definitely going to weigh substantial and to carry it around a lot, it's going to be heavy. So you might want something in maybe a 22 inch peisty accent gong, which is going to weigh less, or something in a smaller gong that's going to weigh less. Uh, for a handheld gong, I think a lot depends on your approach to using it. What do you want? Do you want a focused sound? Then a heavier, smaller gong. You could get like an 18 inch sun gong or an 18 inch chow gong that might have a very heavy, focused sound. If you want a crashier, shh, more whooshy, washy one, uh, a thin wind gong or a white gong and then like an 18 inch, that's going to give you that more crashy, whooshy sound. So a lot depends on how you work with the gong and how you plan to use it. Because I, I have different gongs I'll use as handheld gongs. The main one I use is a 22-inch Peisty Accent. I like it because it has a deep sound for its size, yet it's small and light, and it has a nice crash, but it also has a very solid focused note to it in the center that I like. I use that. Sometimes I will use my 24-inch Venus gong because it's a little bigger, still has a focused sound, kind of a big sound, and I like that. Other times I will use like a 22-inch wind gong because it's very crashy and it just has a nice sort of bright, crashy sort of sound. And sometimes I'm in the mood for that. Recently, I got a 19-inch gong from Grotta Sonora in Italy. It's a fairly heavy steel gong, and it doesn't have a lot of crash to it, but has a very nice solid sound in the middle, bong sort of tone, and it has uh, added a little more harmonics towards the edge. I've been using that the past five or six sessions I've played. A very different sort of sound. Sometimes I will bring a, a larger bossed gong with me because it has a very focused sound. I have some larger bow gongs or gamelan type gongs, tie gongs. Um, yeah, I don't have any one gong that I use as a handheld. A lot of it depends on my mood. Same with my whole setup, like the gongs behind me or the setup I currently have packed up that I use for sessions, is I will change gongs out. 
I want a different sound. I want a different mood. You know, I might be playing down here with something and go, oh yeah, I need that sound. I miss that sound. Let's, let's swap this one out and I'll swap gongs out. So nothing is static in my arsenal. Same with my bowls, my bells, my Burma bells, everything. Is I'll swap instruments out all the time. Because I don't want to be bored. I don't want to play the same stuff over and over and play it the same way over and over. I mean, the same instruments you tend to play the same way. So if I put a different gong in, it breaks everything up. Now I can't fall into the rut I was into because that gong has a whole different character and it works differently with the other gongs. Same with a bowl or a bell or something. It's mix them up. It makes me have to work differently. It makes me have to pay attention and listen because I can't just, you know, find a groove and stay there. And now it's like, oh, I have different sounds. Mm. This fits different. This sounds different. So I'll do that a lot. I'll switch out instruments. But that's me. For you, it might be different and you might not have hundreds of instruments like I have. So again, buying a gong. The biggest thing is if you can listen in person to gongs or bowls or bells, find something that resonates with you. Find something that you play and you go, ah, I have plenty of instruments like that where I've hit it once and it was like, I'm buying this. I knew right away the sound resonated with me. I felt it. It was like, I need this instrument. I don't even have to play it anymore. One strike and I'm going, that's the sound. I'm looking for, that's a sound I can hear in my head, I can use. Other instruments I've had to play and, you know, bang around a whole room of stuff and play different things. And I go, yeah, okay, I could probably work with this one. It'll take a little time to get it, but I like what's, what's going on there. So sometimes it is love at first sound and sometimes it takes a while to really work it into what you're doing. But if you can, listen to it. If you can't, again, go on those websites I mentioned. I'll probably link them down below. And listen to a lot of stuff there. Go on eBay and listen to a lot of people's gong videos. And, you know, people are always writing me. I just had a, somebody write me the other day. You know, what's that gong? They put a comment on one of my old videos. What's that gong in the upper right? Because they wanted to know what it was. So I, I, put a comment back, said that's a 32 inch symphonic gong, you know. So if you see something on a video, maybe ask the person who made the video what it was. And you go, ah, I like that kind of gong. Maybe I'll investigate that. Okay, so that's about it for now. I hope I've given you some ideas about buying and acquiring instruments, what to look for, how to look for things, and, you know, the what to do to just get things and build up your set you know build up your arsenal of instruments and again the most important thing to me is always the sound if i like the sound if i can use the sound i'm going to buy the instrument it might be a great sounding gong but it's not going to work for what i do i'll pass okay have fun out there collect lots of instruments and I will see you next time on It's Cup of Time.